Hey kids, do you remember Polsto? You know, the game with every edgy 2000s kid's favorite libertarian who pisses on everyone? Guns don't kill people, I do. Polsto 2 was a great game. It was designed to just piss everyone off. Its humor was raunchy, and it wouldn't feel about a place in the South Park episode. And it was also extremely violent. But underneath all that, it had some really fun gameplay that lets you play the game how you wish. To quote its tagline, it's only as violent as you are. And to this day, it still gets support from its developer, Running With Scissors. And this is a game that came out in 2003. If that's not dedication, then I don't know what it is. It's not my favorite game, not by a long shot, but it's definitely up there as one of the more unique games I've ever played in my entire life, due to how much it just doesn't care, making fun of everything and everyone, including itself and its own creators at some points. It was just really ahead of its time. But this is Bozo 2 that I'm talking about. It's a sequel. So... What about the first ever Postal game? <laughs> Postal 1 is intriguing. It was made in 1997 by a recently created Running With Scissors. According to this really old interview with Vince Desi, the CEO of RWS, they wanted to create the most outrageous game they could come up with. So the idea of a guy going postal was what they thought of and they just ran with it. And by ran with it, I mean they really ran with it. So what's the plot? Well, there isn't any. You're just a guy who went nuts and grabbed a gun. Now you just gotta kill people. That's all there is to it. No background on your character, no motive, nothing. Just go outside and start shooting. The gameplay is pretty simple. Just shoot everything that moves. When you reach a certain quota, the percentage number at the top of your HUD, press F1 to move to the next level. Rinse and repeat until the game ends. Your targets are for the most part, law enforcement and civilians. The graphics, honestly, are terrible, even for the time. Everyone looks like a smudge on the screen and the violence is laughable at best. The voice acting, apart from your character's lines, is nothing to write home about. The music only plays in loading screens and are mostly made out of samples taken from the Zero-G album Altered States. And that, that's it. That's the game. Or, at least, that's the game when you look at it from a surface level. Because I decided to take a little closer look at it. This is the weirdness of Postal 1. So, it's a game where you play as a maniac. The only characterization and context you get as to who you are is fed to you by diary entries in the loading screens. But even then, they don't tell you much. From what little we can gather, your character seems to think that the whole town is infected with some sort of madness plague and that only he can cure it, by killing everyone. First of all, I would like to bring attention to the stylization of these loading screens. You get a creepy piece of art in the background, the diary entry over it, and a creepy track to listen to. Yep, this is definitely that 90s edge, but honestly, I can't even hate it. The artwork is honestly pretty good. The art director's name is Randy Bradley, who, funnily enough, also worked on the art direction for a Tom and Jerry game of all things. I wonder what that looked like. I like the surrealistic, borderline, organic feeling that these loading screens give out. The unsettling, distorted imagery at show leaves a lot open to interpretation as well. It really literally feels like you're taking a look at the inside of your character's brain. Some of these are just nearly completely impossible to understand, which then again, mixed with the fact that we don't know why our character is committing all these atrocities is only fitting. We're not supposed to understand our character, which only makes him all that much scarier. It's like we're looking at total madness itself. Then you get to the gameplay. After you finally exit the loading screen, the sudden change from the psychotic art to a completely normal environment is very jarring. And it's so quiet too, at least until the bullets start flying. Then everyone dies and it's just quiet again, like nothing ever happened here, despite all the dead bodies on the floor. It brings a nihilistic sort of feel to the game. 
The only game I can think of that does something similar to this is Hollow Miami, when all the enemies in the stage are dead and you're walking around through the piles of corpses. But in that game, it's different. See, in Hollow Miami, the music goes silent and an ambient drone starts playing as soon as you start wandering around thinking about the mess you made. In Postal, there's just no difference whatsoever in the soundscape. This environment would feel completely the same with or without all these corpses. Also, the stages themselves are very strange. It's doing that Resident Evil thing where you have the 3D polygonal characters over the 2D backgrounds, but the artwork here is very disjointed. It was obviously drawn by the same people that drew the loading screens, so when you wander around, it's like you can still feel that eerie surreal element of them around. And I think the developers were aware of this. Pay attention to the sound design in these areas. There are no explanations whatsoever for these sound effects. They're just there, just coming from an unknown source. It adds to the whole nightmare aesthetic of the game even more. And the weirdest thing is, these sound effects are in Postal 2 as well. You can hear a lot of these same sound effects in that game as well. And yeah, once more, there's no explanation for them. If anything, it just makes the games feel like they're taking place in some sort of limbo. Oh, uh, one more thing. What about our character's voice? I regret nothing. Yep, that's Rick Hunter. Same guy who voiced Postal Dude in Postal 2. So, this would imply that our main character is the same guy from the second game, right? But that wouldn't make any sense. In Postal 2, the Postal Dude is, for the most part, completely stable. And as we know from the DLC Paradise Lost, it's definitely not a prequel to Postal 1. So, where does that put Postal 1 in the Postal timeline? Its events are only mentioned in Postal 3, and Postal 3 was retconned into being non-canon. That puts Postal 1 in some sort of ambiguous timeline where just no one knows when it takes place, or if the main character is the same main character at all. There are theories around, which with the ending of Postal Redux, Postal 1's remake, definitely only get crazier, but nothing conclusive. So, what is Postal 1 at all? It's just a game that belongs to a franchise that just forgot about it. Sure, Postal Redux exists, but it doesn't answer any questions at all. And that's where it ends. Postal 1 is just there. It's a game that happened. It had a sequel, which was miles more popular and completely different, and then the game was just slowly overtaken by obscurity. Some influences of it are still present, but as it stands, it's just one hell of a weird start to a franchise that at one point had Ron Jeremy starring in it. Good to meet you, kid. You're hired. <laughs> Well, does that mean that Postal 1 is completely forgotten? Uh, yeah, but no. If you're strange like me and you get a kick out of listening to the weird loading screen songs, you might have seen some of the custom fan made Postal loading screens that are out there on YouTube. For a while, I thought I was the only person on earth that had such a weird interest in the game's atmosphere, but apparently there are more. And I mean, there's rather a lot of fan made content out there just for Postal 1's loading screens. And that made me realize. Postal 1 has a very unique feeling. It has a completely unadulterated psychotic insanity feel to it. It gave us a look into the inside of a mass killer's mind and it just stuck with some of us. It's a very small, very tight community, but it's there and I just can't help but notice it and appreciate it.
So yeah, that's also one. It's a freaking weird game and by all intents and purposes an extremely mediocre one. Hell, honestly I nearly fell asleep recording footage for this game. The only thing that kept me awake were the loading screens. Uh, something about this horrifying, mentally deranged vibe could result in some neat horror games I guess. Or at the very least it could inspire some kick-ass albumarts for some metal bands. Anyway, uh, more of the story, uh, I don't know, go play Puzzle 2.